Today I'm going to be sharing my system for how I organize my cut flower seeds and how I plan my garden every year. Hello and welcome to Haven Meadows. I'm Karen. So it's mid-February and here in Indiana we have been having a week of sunshine and about 50 degrees. It's been beautiful and it just makes me want to get out and get my hands dirty. So my daffodils are just starting to peek up and there's not a whole lot that I can do right now. Obviously can't plant seeds outside although the weather this week kind of makes me think I can. I'm also barefoot. <laughs> Spring is definitely on its way and I'm starting to Obviously I've started some of my seeds and I'm really looking forward to just the first flowers and planting everything. It's just so beautiful. It makes me so excited. So I'm actually going to take you inside onto my computer and I will show you my systems. I have combined several different people's systems to kind of form my own custom thing that works for me. So I hope that you'll be able to either take on this system or pick out some pieces like I have. and use them in a way that benefits and helps you in planning your own garden. So a big part of my system, and this is something that I learned from Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, is this weekly calendar that I have here on my refrigerator. What I do is instead of having a specific day that I plant my seeds, is I have them written down by week. So today is February 14th, Valentine's Day actually, and so we're in week seven. So I don't have anything that I start this week, but um, last week I started something, week six, and week eight I'm also starting some seeds. It's easier than having like a specific date that I need to plant my seeds. So I know that like, okay, this week it's week eight, I know I have some things that I need to plan, and then I'll just go and I'll grab everything from my list that's planted in week eight, and I start those seeds. All right, so this here is my big spreadsheet, and I've zoomed out a little bit so that you can see more rows. There's more over this way and a bunch more this way. So over here I have all my varieties listed in alphabetical order and this is pretty self-explanatory. But then the next column here is hardiness zone. I just added this one this last year. Um, the only reason I have this is to signify which ones are cool flowers because I am experimenting with some cool flowers this year for the first time. I don't love this column right now because I feel like it takes up a lot of room and I think I'm going to figure something else out that will be able to see which ones are cool flowers without having a whole extra column because it takes up a lot of room. All right, so this column right here is pretty important. This is what coordinates with the calendar that I just showed you. This is a sowing week. Most of your seed packets will say, so you know, six to eight weeks before your last frost. So what I do is I go onto my calendar and I look at my last frost date, which is May 6th for my area in zone 5B, 6A. Counting back six to eight weeks from my last frost date, whatever week that happens to be, I will put here into this sewing week spot. So in this column are all my sewing weeks for every variety and I have color coded them. So like all my week fours are one color um, week 10s are all one color and what that allows me to do is just quickly scan my list and pick out all the ones that are the same color for that week and it's just it's easier to see which ones I need to plant that week. Stratify, I just have a lot of notes on here about the different things that this plant needs. Basically it's a huge growing guide for all the flowers that I grow. Some varieties like to be cold before they're planted and so that's what this row is. So this row here signifies the sowing method, either plug or direct sown. Sowing notes, um, this one, obviously self-explanatory. When I'm going to plant my seeds, I will have my laptop here with me and I look at the variety and it'll say, you know, do this, do this, do this. There's a germination, there again, it's just more information. Um, germination temperature is something that I do look at quite a bit. Um, most of my seeds I'm starting this year inside my grow shelf where I have wrapped some painter's plastic around the outside and that's really been helping to keep my humidity a lot higher. Um, but then that's also around 70 degrees and so some varieties like the Ami White Dill, this would actually would prefer to be cooler. I did start it in there. I don't know if, that's, if that'll be a problem or not, but, um, and then growing on is something else that I do keep track of. So I'll probably, once the 
Ami has all sprouted in my channel trays, I will probably set up a separate little space, possibly my basement, for things like Sotlophinium wants to be a little bit cooler, um, the Ami likes to be a little bit cooler, Lysianthus like to be cooler. So some of those things I will put into plug trays and put those in a separate area then. Um, transplant time here also. This row needs to be edited yet. I want to switch this up to be in order of weeks as well. Site, again, I don't look at these every year. Spacing, this is super important when I go to transplant them out. Um, pinching, as you can see, it has some empty spots that I still need to fill in. Staking it there again, super important when I go to transplant. Days to bloom. This is also very important because this here gives me the dates for my expected first harvest. I have gotten those dates from either previous years or then if I haven't grown it before, I have used my days to bloom right here. Um, also this row right here, I've also color coordinated to know Okay, for the month of April, right? This is what I can expect to be in bloom. For the month of August, this is what I can expect to be in bloom. Color coding is really helpful when I'm planning like a bouquet or I recently had an inquiry about a wedding. Um, and so then I can just look at, okay, for like the month of May, right? This is what I can expect to have in bloom. Height, it's not a super big deal, but again, just information that I like to have on hand. Harvest stage, most of this stuff, I know, you know, just from memory now, but especially when you're first starting out, it's really helpful to have some notes about, okay, when do I harvest this? Harvest length. Okay, this here is something I wanna fill in a little bit more this year. And I actually should probably say expected last harvest. Um, so I want to put in a date of like, with this, right, with the planting that I've done and with my first harvest being June 5th, when was the last time that I got a good harvest off of Ami White Dill? That's what will go into this row. Handling, um, this is also something that I sometimes reference. Most of it I've also committed to memory by now. Um, that's just like after I've harvested them, what, how they need to be handled. Do they want to be refrigerated? Um, do they need to be dipped in boiling water? Just that kind of thing. Storage, okay, these kind of go together. Storage, this is the temperature actually, so that they like to be stored at after cutting. Base life, um, hybrid status. This is something else that I've just added within the last couple of years. It's not super important. It's kind of one of those like minor things that I you know look at every so often. But if I do think about saving seed or anything like that, I like to know which varieties that I can expect to come back true to form. Type, um, annual, perennial, tender perennial. Notes, these are just, just random notes that I've made to myself. So that pretty much explains my system here. The only other thing, I think these blue ones here are supposed to signify whether or not they want to be stratified and that would take care of this row. So I'm always working on updating this and there's so much information that, you know, there's always like updates to make and changes to be made. This is like my huge growing guide and explains what I look at to know when to plant, when to transplant and spacing. I just have this huge guide that for every variety that I grow. When it comes to actually planning out my growing space, I have switched it up in the past couple of years. The first year or so, I was really like systematic and orderly about it and I did this whole like spreadsheet. But the past two years, I've done a little bit of a looser plan. I like to try and switch up my crops just a little bit as far as the location, but I just kind of do a general idea and then I just fill up my space after that. I kind of have an idea of like what I planted the year before and then I just adjust from that. I could be more strategic and like super systematic about it, but I kind of have a loose plan and go from there. And these are some of my beginning scribbles literally for this year. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really hope that you found it helpful and that you're able to take a couple things away and improve your own system. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that more people like you can find these videos and we can all grow together in our flower journey. Bye till next time.